We want to welcome you to the broadcast. It's Wednesday, April the 13th, 2022. Are you having a great day? I hope it's been a wonderful day for you, and we're delighted to be coming to you just for a few moments today. Uh, listen, you you chose a good day to to log on, and uh, we, we want to take just a, a little bit of time and uh, take care of a lot of things and try to speak some wonderful truth into your life today. We sure love and appreciate our Countdown family. Uh, many of those are, are our Calvary family, but many of those are not our Calvary family. And so we welcome you. Thank you for being here today. I hope you're, again, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope that uh, you're feeling the favor of the Lord and the blessings of God. And so listen, let me encourage you to like and share uh, the broadcast, if you would. The more you do that, the more the truth is going to get out. And also let me encourage you to let us know you're watching, uh, who you are, where you're from. And uh, if you don't comment, sometimes we don't know that you're aboard, and we would love to, to interact with our live audience today. Um, and so take the opportunity to hit that share button right now and that like button right now, and we would appreciate that so much. We're going to go ahead and do some what we call shout-outs here, uh, here at Countdown, and then we're going to mention uh, an announcement and a giveaway, get right into a very brief but a very important lesson and so I hope that you'll hang in there with us just for a little bit today. Let's find out who's aboard today. Amen. It's good to have you. We welcome the Gillies aboard, Donnie and Tamara. God bless you guys. It's good to see you today. Thank you for tuning in. There's Christine Edwards. Hello, Miss Christine. I hope you and Gary are blessed today. Great to have you aboard today. Thank you for being here, Miss Almeida Campbell. Hello, Miss Almeida. Good to see you today. I hope you and Charles are well today. What a blessing to have you on the broadcast. The Hooks are watching from Morganton, North Carolina. Barry, Christine, welcome aboard. Good to see you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, Debbie Johnson is watching today. Miss Debbie, great to have you on the broadcast. Thanks for uh, being so faithful, and we sure appreciate you in a big, big way. Um, uh, Harriet Mason is with us today. Hello, Miss Harriet. I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's great to see you, Karen Hoffman. Hello, Miss Karen. Welcome aboard. Good to see you today. Thanks for tuning in, Karen. There's Tom Lampley. Tom, good to have you back on the broadcast today. Thank you so much for tuning in, my friend. Good to see you today. Curtis Lee is back on here with us today. Curtis, good to see you, buddy. And it was great to see you and your dad last night. And uh, I sure appreciate you, buddy. Thank you for being a part of the broadcast today. Uh, Krista Jarvis is watching today. Hello, Miss Krista. I hope you're having a wonderful day. You and Brother Stacy. good to see you today. God bless you. Uh, Ricky Bird, hello, Brother Ricky. Good to see you today. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, Ricky says, hello, family. Can't wait to see all of you in the Lord's house tonight. Amen, Brother Ricky. Me too. And uh, looking forward to seeing you, my friend. Thank you for, for tuning in today. There's Phyllis Hudson. Hello, Miss Phyllis. And I hope you and Jackie are blessed today. It's great to see you. Rose Ballou is watching. Hello, Miss Rose. I hope you're having a wonderful day today. There's Drusilla Mendoza. Hello, Miss Drusilla. I hope you and Martin are having a great Wednesday today. It's good to see you. Um, uh, Gwendolyn Rash is aboard today. Hello, Gwendolyn. Good to see you today. Thanks for watching from West Jefferson. Carla Revis is aboard today. Hello, Carla. Good to see you today. She says, looking forward to, to tonight. Amen, Miss Carla. Me too. And it's good to see you today. God bless you. There's Linda Redmond. Hello, Miss Linda. Thank you for tuning in today. What a blessing to have you on the broadcast today. Chuck Campbell is with us today. Hello, Brother Chuck. Thank you, Chuck. I appreciate that kind comment. And uh, amen. I'm, I'm glad you're one of our Calvary family, Chuck. Good to see you today. There's Will Gandy. Hello, Will. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you for tuning in today. Uh, Carrie Painter just came aboard. Hello, Miss Carrie. I hope you and the girls are blessed beyond measure and having a great day today. Uh, Bruce Tripp is aboard today. Bruce, good to see you back with us today. Thank you for tuning in. And Bruce, you'll have to remind me where you're watching from. I can't remember, but it's great to have you on here today. Thank you for tuning in. Well, listen, that's some of the ones that I can see. There may be others that may come aboard in just a bit. And so those of you who are our faithful countdown family, if you'll help me welcome folks aboard, we would appreciate that very, very much. That would be a blessing. Well, listen, let me mention, of course, first of all, our Magnify Conference uh, tonight, Lord willing, that is. Tonight's our last night, and man, I want to tell you something. It has been fantastic. Every single night has been like a spiritual vitamin shot. I mean, it's just been incredible. 
Last night, of course, we had Pastor Ethan Green, and man, he just, God used him in a powerful way to remind us of the importance of the Word of God, and uh, what a great service last night. What a powerful service last night. Uh, it was what I would call a worshipful service last night. Folks were getting full. It was great. I'm telling you, it was just great to be in the house of the Lord. If you were there, you know what I'm talking about. Well, we are so excited about tonight, and so the service will begin at 7 p.m., and uh, we welcome tonight Brother Jimmy Caudill. Uh, Brother Jimmy will be coming tonight, and he'll be providing special music for us, and he's an excellent musician and wonderful singer, and you'll enjoy Brother Caudill, I promise you that. And then, of course, we welcome Pastor Jonathan Barker from the Amazing Grace Baptist Church uh, up in Mount Airy, North Carolina, Dobson, the Dobson area. And we sure love Brother Jonathan, and he's going to be with us tonight. And so, Calvary family, whatever you do, whatever you do, don't let anything keep you away tonight. We hope to see you in your places. I hope you'll invite someone, bring someone with you tonight. And uh, then we want to encourage you if, you, if you can't be with us tonight or you're out of state, be sure you tune into the live stream. If possible, we would love to welcome you aboard. And so anyway, please help us pray about the service tonight. And we look forward to seeing our Calvary family here in just a little while, 7 p.m. We're going to kick it off and looking forward to what God is going to do in a very powerful, powerful way. And again, what a, what a, what a great meeting this has been for our church, especially right after the revival that God gave us back in March. And, and so we're just thankful. I tell you what, man, just clipping coupons, thanking God for his blessings underneath the spout where the glory comes out. And so we thank the Lord for that. I hope to see you tonight. We'll do our best to make you feel welcome. All right, God bless you. And then also, listen, don't forget this. We are promoting the giveaway this week. We have a book by Dr. David Jeremiah. And it's a book entitled Searching for Heaven on Earth. Searching for Heaven on Earth. Uh, this is a, a, a pretty easy read. It looks, looks like about 141 pages, uh, but a nice little book here. And so we're promoting this. So here's what you need to do. Just like and share. And toward the end of the week, my beautiful little wife will put all these names together in a, 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 in a container. We'll draw out. Won't cost you a thing. If you're one of our folks, we'll present it to you. If you're not one of our folks, we'll put it in an envelope and get it to you right away. And won't cost you. We'll take care of the postage and the shipping and handling and all of that. Man, that's a good deal, isn't it? <laughs> Aren't you glad you tuned in to Countdown today? And so we uh, we welcome you today. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Well, listen, uh, we are talking about this subject, how to be a true friend. We have been discussing for the last two weeks, we've been discussing the book of Job. And I'm going to be honest with you. This has been incredibly helpful, I believe. And I've got some feed. I've received some feedback from this uh, the last two weeks, and I'm thankful for that. I, and I'm going to be honest with you. As I was looking over earlier today, looking over the outline and preparing for the broadcast today, I thought, Lord, I'm probably going to put some of this content in a book in book form because I, in, in my spirit, I believe these things are crucial, and these are some things that God's people need to desperately need to learn. Now we're talking about Job's friends, quote, so-called friends. And with friends like these, you really don't need enemies. Now, we focused on Eliphaz, and we said that Eliphaz was a Pharisaical friend. Uh, he acted like a Pharisee. And then we said about Bildad that Bildad was a presumptuous friend. He presumed that he knew what God was doing. He presumed that he knew uh, why Job was suffering like he was suffering, when in reality, Bildad had no clue what was going on, and God rebuked him in the end and so Eliphaz was that pharisaical friend, and Bildad was that presumptuous friend. But number three, boy, I want us to focus for just a few minutes today on Zophar. Now, you say, Pastor, what kind of friend was Zophar? Zophar was what we're going to call a pernicious friend. Now, pernicious, you say, Preacher, what in the world does that mean? I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in just a moment. I want you to look in your Bibles, if you will, at Job chapter number 11, Job 11, and uh, I'm going to be honest with you, folks. If this scripture wasn't in the Bible, I wouldn't believe it. I mean, if it, if it wasn't, I'm glad that God put it in here so he could let us know how bad this really was. Uh, there's a reason that God sometimes puts, puts negatives into the word of God. And the, these are definitely some negatives 
And uh, quite honestly, these are some negative friends in my opinion. But Zophar, look, if you will, at uh, Job 11, verse number one. And I want you to listen. Man, if you're driving down the road right now, just do your best to, to, to turn up your volume and listen to this scripture and listen to what Zophar says to his so-called friend, Job, who's going through the fire right now. Job 11, verse one, then answered Zophar, the Naamathite, and said, should not the multitude of words be answered? And should a man full of talk be justified? Now listen to that. And should a man full of talk, in other words, accusing Job here full of talk, should a man full of talk be justified? Listen to verse three. <coughs> so far says this, should thy lies make men hold their peace? And when thou mockest, should no man make thee ashamed? For thou hast said, my doctrine is pure and I am clean in thine eyes. But all that God would speak and open his lips against thee. Now, don't forget, Zophar is talking to Job here. And he says, Job, I wish that, that God would, would uh, speak against thee. In verse 6, he says, And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom, and that they are double to that which is. Know therefore, listen to this, church. Know therefore that God exacteth of thee less than thine iniquity deserveth. Wow. Now, just in case you're not following that, basically Zophar comes to Job when Job is in his lowest, in the lowest day of his life, and Zophar comes as a pernicious friend. Now, that word per pernicious means harmful or hurtful. It means openly critical. Zophar extends no mercy at all. He, he says to Job, Job, you know what? You better be glad you didn't really get what you deserved. In other words, you better be glad that God's not giving you what you really deserve. I mean, you, you're that bad, Job. You're that wicked, Job. You're that low, Job. And, uh, and, and the reason that you're suffering right now is because God is judging you and you deserve, man, that's what it's saying. Go read it for yourself. And he's saying to his, quote, friend, Job, Job, you deserve everything you're getting. Now, again, I, I, I say again with friends like this, you know, who needs, who needs enemies? Um, uh, again, Zophar comes across to me as one that has n no reserves, no restraint, and no self-control. Now, if you're in our service list last Sunday, we were preaching about fire, the fire of the Lord, the fire of the Word of God. And this last Sunday, I gave an illustration, and I love illustrations, but I gave an illustration to our congregation about a place called Centralia, Pennsylvania. And uh, back in 1962, supposedly, a spark from burning trash got into one of the coal mines there. It set the coal dust on fire in 1962, and those tunnels caught fire, and uh, those fires have been burning every, ever since. Now, the uh, city or the town of Centralia has uh, since been uh, condemned, and it's been forsaken. And I, when I first read that story, that was so amazing to me. I thought, Lord, before I tell our church that, I'm going to go fact check that a little bit. I'm going to make sure that that's not just, uh, you know, some something made up. And so sure enough, I did. I went and I fact-checked that story to make sure that it was right, and it was. It was accurate. And I gave that story to our congregation on this last Sunday. Now you, you say, Pastor, what does that have to do with anything? Listen to this. Zophar was the kind of guy that never saw any importance in fact-checking anything. Uh, if it came to his mind, he said it. If it came to his mind, he reported it. Uh, that's the kind of guy he was. No self-restraint, no self-control. I mean, uh, if it left here and came here, he just blurted it out. And that's exactly what he's doing in Job's life. Now, let, let me say something to us today, and we're going to be done. Before we say things to people, and before we say things about people, could you and I do some fact-checking? You know, sometimes people don't mind, and, and, you, and you know what I'm telling you is the truth, People don't mind putting things on Facebook and Twitter. And truth of the matter is, they haven't checked it out. They just heard something about someone, and man, they just put it on there and uh, all over social media. 
And before you know it, you've got that person slandered and you've got them labeled. Oh, listen to me. Could we make sure that we're not a Zophar? Could we make sure that we fact check things before we say them to people or about people? And then I want to go a step further with this. After we've done some fact checking and we know it's true, then I think we need to ask ourselves this question. Is it going to edify if we say it? Is it going to edify that person? Is it going to edify others? Is it going to help? Is it going to hurt? Is it going to build up? Is it going to destroy? You, you, will you say, preacher, it's true, okay? Just because something is true doesn't mean we need to tell it. <laughs> you say, well, pastor, I checked it out. You know, it's not just... Uh, it's not just conjecture. It's not just gossip. This is true. Okay, all right. Listen, church, just because it's true doesn't mean you need to put it on Facebook. And just because it's true doesn't mean you need to spread it around. And just because it's true doesn't necessarily mean that you need to say something to that person or say something about that person. How many know this? The Lord said that vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And uh, you know what I believe? I believe that God can take care of someone and he doesn't need my help to do that. Now, listen to some great verses that I wrote down. And I want to give you, if I could, Proverbs 10, verse 12. The Bible says, Hatred stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. Wow, wow. How about Proverbs chapter 12, verse number 16? The Bible says, A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man, a wise man, a prudent man covereth shame. How about Proverbs 17, verse number nine? The Bible says, he that covereth a transgression seeketh love, but he that repeateth the matter separateth very friends. And Proverbs 29 and verse number 11, what a, what a verse. The Bible says, a fool uttereth all his mind. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Now that was so far Zophar uttered all his mind. But the Bible says a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. Oh, listen to me. Let's make sure that we are a true friend. Uh, we don't want to be an Eliphaz or a Bildad, and we definitely don't want to be a Zophar. And so, hey, listen, be a friend. Be a true friend. Now, we're going to, Lord willing, we're going to go a little further with this. And so I encourage you to hang in there with us for the next couple of days or so. And I'm trusting that the Lord will use this to be a uh, to be a blessing. We just put our prayer helpline on the screen, 704-327-5662. If you're watching the broadcast today and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, listen, would you call us right now? Would you call us and make sure that you get through where you can leave a, a message? If no one answers immediately, be sure you leave a message, leave a name, leave a callback number. So we can get back with you and share the gospel with you. Oh, listen, friend, we want you to be in heaven with us. And then if you're watching this broadcast today and you've got a heavy, heavy, uh, what almost seems like an insurmountable burden, why don't you call us? And we would love to pray with you today and believe God with you. And then all of our countdown family, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. Well, Calvary family, Visitors, we're looking forward to Magnify Conference tonight, 7 o'clock. I hope you'll be there early, be in your places, and we're looking forward to what God is going to do in a great, great way. Listen, have a great day. Be careful. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you in just a little bit. God bless, and take care.